An order under the new legislation was served at the headquarters of the Bank of Ireland at the start of business today. One and three quarter million pounds has now been transferred into the High Court, successfully completing the Irish government's extraordinary cloak and dagger operation. The High Court now controls the money, and if nobody lodges a claim to it, it may end up swelling the coffers of the Irish Exchequer. The government is clearly delighted at thwarting the IRA, and it's being viewed in Dublin as a coup of major significance. There's permanent police protection at Mr Tidy's luxury home on the outskirts of Dublin. He has armed bodyguards wherever he goes. But a statement issued on behalf of his company says that at no time has any money been paid through ransom or extortion to any organisation. A shattered executive saloon car. The businessman who'd been travelling in it, taken at gunpoint. It is one of the most insidious of crimes, leaving anguished families. Don Tidy's children appealed on television for his abductors to spare him, and boardroom colleagues frequently in conflict with the Irish authorities over the payment of a ransom. Three influential businessmen have recently been targets of the IRA kidnap gangs. Bernard Dunn in 1981, Galen Weston in August 83, and Don Tidy in November 83. There was one other similar operation, the theft of the stallion Shergar in February 1983. A two million pound ransom was demanded, but unlike the human victims who've all survived, Shergar did not. The stallion's owners commissioned their own confidential inquiry into what had happened, carried out by their own security experts. This is their report. It leaves no doubt that Shergar, like the businessmen, was taken by the IRA in an attempt both to raise money and spread alarm among Ireland's rich. The Irish security forces now have elaborate contingency plans to deal with the kidnappings. They believe they know the names of the IRA men involved. The gang is led by some of the men who broke out of the Mays prison near Belfast in 1982. One, men two, who are now three, concentrating four, five, six, on fundraising crimes in the Republic. Ten. To counter the threat, the Irish Army has set up its own version of the SAS, a highly trained, highly secret unit known as the Army Rangers. This is the only occasion on which they've been filmed in operation, spearheading the hunt for the men who abducted Don Tidy. Alongside the Army Rangers are the men of the Garda Anti-Terrorist Task Force. It will have been these detectives who will have tracked down the IRA bank account, fulfilling their orders from the Irish government that under no circumstances is any ransom money to find its way into the hands of the IRA.